first thing you'll see when you come to www.draw.io is the splash screen. So basically, where do you want to save your diagrams to? A Google Drive account, a Dropbox account, or your computer's hard disk, or local storage in the browser in the case of a tablet, for example. If you'll always be using that storage, click the Remember box, and you won't get this splash screen every time. I'm going to select Google Drive. If you tick the Remember the setting box on the first splash and you want to uh, switch to another storage, click the Not Using link to revert to the original splash. You can also change user on the Drive and Dropbox splashes using the Change User link. Note that if you haven't used Drive or Dropbox with Draw.io before, you'll be asked to authorize the app with your account. That is, except for Google Apps for Business users, your domain admin will author already have authorized on your behalf. To continue, either create a new diagram or open an existing diagram you've created. Opening will display the appropriate picker for your storage selection. There's the Google picker, for example. Selecting new will offer you the option to clone a template or create a new blank diagram. I'm going to create a new blank diagram. Next, you're presented with the user interface. There's the main drawing canvas. Over on the left are the libraries or stencils. At the top, you have the menu and the toolbar. And at the bottom, you have a footer, which you can collapse. At the bottom left, you have an overview panel, also known as a bird's eye panel, which you, is interactive. You can move it around. You can resize it, which invokes a zoom, etc. Right-clicking and dragging the main canvas moves the canvas around. You can also use the scroll bars to move around it. There are two ways to get shapes from the library onto the canvas area. Either just click the shape, or click, drag, and release the shape where you want to position it. On touch devices, this equates to touching once, holding, dragging, and releasing. You can assume throughout this video that click equates to tap on touch devices. There are more shapes in the libraries that you can expand. If we scroll down, you can op open up any of the sections and drag the elements onto the graph. There's also the More Shapes dialog, which you can vote via the More Shapes option. Uh, for example, if you select Cisco, you'll get the well-known Cisco diagramming icons, and you use them like any other shape. In terms of basic interaction with shapes on the main canvas, you can move them by clicking, dragging and releasing them. You can resize them by clicking and then dragging one of the blue handles that appear when you select them. And you can rotate them by clicking and dragging the blue circle that appears above a selected shape. To create a connector between two shapes, and I'll clear the diagram to make this clearer. You can either connect from a central connector where the edge appears to float around the perimeter of a shape or from one of the fixed points around a shape that's indicated by a light cross. So you click, drag and drop onto another connection point to create a floating edge, that is one that connects to the perimeter, when you select a shape, an arrow appears to the right of the shape, and you connect in the same way, either to a fixed connection point or to the central floating point of a shape as indicated by the highlighting on that shape. If we create these two connectors, one is between fixed points and the other between floating points, you'll see that as we move the two shapes around each other, the floating connector point does what it says, it floats. The fixed point only connects to that fixed point around the perimeter, and this can overlap uh, the, the, the shapes that that edge is connected to. To avoid this, as an example, you might select the edge, go to Edge Routing, and click Orthogonal. And that will avoid that shape from overlaying over the two vertices that it's connected to. To edit the text of shapes or connections, double click, test, test, and that brings up the editor. Note that pressing enter on a keyboard based system does not finish editing, it brings up a new line. 
to finish editing, click outside of the shape. If you're in the middle of editing and you want you don't want to finish, pressing escape just cancels it and reverts to you the previous label. Selected items can have various formatting options available on the toolbar and the menu apply to them. The most popular option is formatted text. This turns labels into full HTML labels. The formatted text shape in the general section is already an, a, a pre-made HTML label. If you double click on it, the toolbar will change to the HTML label editing toolbar and this provides additional editing options like um, like superscript, subscript, etc. You can also click on the rightmost button of the toolbar, the, the text editing toolbar, and then you can just edit the raw HTML and insert anything you like into the into the shape. In the edit menu, most of the options should be fairly obvious. The two that might not um, Edit link allows you to assign a URL to a shape and by clicking on that shape after you're finished you will then be taken to that URL. The other non-obvious option is edit data. This allows you to add arbitrary key value pairs like so. And the reason you might use that is that if you want to parse the XML of the diagram which can be found via um, file edit you might want to add business logic to a particular cell um, when you parse the XML. The view menu relates to zooming and fitting the diagram into the page. These should be fairly obvious paradigms from previous applications you've used. Formatting relates to styling, connectors and shapes. Those styles not available to the current selection will be disabled. Um, most should be fairly obvious, gradient, fill colour, shadow, opacity, of note. Um, if you select a connector, line start and line end refer, refer to the arrows uh, at either end of, of connectors. On the arrange menu, I'll just draw your attention to um, Z order. Z order is the uh, vertical order by which uh, everything is displayed. So if, for example, you did not want test new line to overlap the other vertex behind it, you select two back and then test is above it in Z order. <laughs> the other thing you might want to use is the automatic layouting. If we create a simple diagram there, we we'll go to arrange, layout, vertical flow, it will position from the selected vertex using the automatic layouting selected.